Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Warriors for Jesus Ministry. It is our desire to inform you of the events that are happening in the world and to inform you from a biblical perspective and from a prophetic perspective. We thank you so much for tuning in today, and we know that you know that indeed this is the day which the Lord has made, and of course we share rejoice and be glad in it. So we're so thankful that you have tuned in to Warriors for Jesus Ministry, also to TLE Network, and we know that you are definitely aware that God has been good and is good to all of us, so he deserves to be served, worshiped, and praised, because his name is holy. And holiness is what God is calling for in these last and evil days. Holiness is a lifestyle. Holiness is something that we have to choose to learn how to do and how to live. And God's word teaches us and instructs us in the way that we should live. There are many books out there that people are learning from, but there is no book that ever existed that's greater than the Holy Scriptures. So we thank you so much for tuning in, and we just want you to know that we are indeed thankful unto God for his goodness in our life. So with that being said, as we said before, we want to come and teach you the word of God, Warriors for Jesus Ministry. And again, I say it is our desire to inform you of the events that are happening in the world from a biblical perspective and from a prophetic perspective. You know, a lot of people are not willing to prophetically understand what's happening in the world today. Now, to be very simple, when I say prophetically, I'm talking about the Word of God has informed us what's happening in this present world and why it is happening. God's Word has foretold and is foretelling and yet revealing what has happened in the past, what has happened in the present, and what is going to happen in the future. So we have to understand that we have to see things from a prophetic perspective. Because the world today, many people don't understand why things are happening like they're happening. They put themselves in denial. But the purpose of prophecy is to prepare us for what is to come. So many people seem to think that we're going to get past all of what is happening. And then we're going to return back to normal. Now, I am not here to teach a negative message or a negative lesson, but I am here to reveal to you exactly what the Word of God teaches us to expect and how victorious we can be when we surrender our life to God. So many people think that life is going to return back to normal, but they're in for a rude awakening. A rude awakening is coming because it's not ever going to return back to normal as it used to be in this world. We are in the last days. And that means that every day, every week, every month, and every year, we are indeed getting closer and closer um, to things that are changing like never before. And as we get closer and closer, think just, just think about how things have changed in the last year. Just think about it. We have seen in America, we have seen things change, and around the world, how things have fundamentally changed, fund fundamentally changed, deeply changed. And also, think about how the church has changed. Now, the reason is because of prophecy. Because God is allowing evil to do what it wants to do. Now, it's a different world. A different world. Now, when we talk about different, we mean something that's not the same as another or each other, something that's unlike in nature, form, or quality. We're not talking about Mother Nature. We're not talking about how um, they're trying to redefine the earth and they want to take gasoline cars out and make everything electric cars and they want to protect the earth and they want to clear out all the pollution in the earth. It won't happen. It won't happen physically and it definitely won't happen spiritually unless you surrender your life to God. 
But this is a different world. And what I mean by that is different in character and personality. The environments are different. Things are totally different in these times. And it's important that we realize that it's not going to change how people think that is going to change. Now, let's look at what Jesus said. Jesus said, Hereafter, I will not talk much with you, for the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. In other words, Jesus said, He can't accuse me of anything because I am the conqueror. I am the king of kings and the Lord of lords. But I am going to allow him to function. I am going to allow him to come. And in other words, the prince of this world is the one who rules the system of darkness. And his name is called Satan. His name is called Satan. He is the prince of this world. And he has a system, a world system, that he is trying to put into everybody to follow his way and not God's way. Now, <clears throat> excuse me, let's look at the scripture here, what Jesus said. Jesus said, and because iniquity, lawlessness, wickedness shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Those are the words of Jesus. Now, we're going to show you scriptures because we want you to be able to go back with this teaching because it is definitely uh, words of Jesus is a PowerPoint teaching ministry that is designed to inform you as well as believe that you will allow God to transform you. Now, let's look at what the Apostle Paul said. The Apostle Paul made a strong statement, a very strong statement that he made. And what he said was that evil men... In 2 Timothy 3 and 13, he says, But evil men and seducers, in other words, wicked men, imposters, people that are coming into the church, people that are coming and professing to be servants of God, but they're imposters, they're seducers, they're easily, they're influencing and deceiving people. And Jesus, I mean, Paul, Paul told Timothy all the way in the first century that this would happen and we can apply the same scripture to today because evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived this is where we're at today with the time of evil men and seducers waxing worse and worse and we just want to look at a few more scriptures here because it's important that we understand what the word of God is saying to us now, Paul also said to Timothy, because he was preparing him for the battle that he was going to have to face, and God is saying the same thing to us. That's why we are presenting to you the teaching from a biblical perspective and from a prophetic perspective, because it's happening just like it was written in the Holy Scriptures. So, Paul says to Timothy, this know also that in the last days, perilous times shall come, difficult times. Times where men will be able to won't be able to understand what is happening in the world. We are living in those times. We are indeed living in the times where people are really trying to understand what exactly is going on in this world today. But the Bible plainly tells us, because when we look at um, the scriptures in 2 Timothy, when Paul was talking to Timothy, and he was letting him know about these times in 2 Timothy 3 and 1, look at verse number 2. It says, men should be lovers of their own selves, disobedient to parents, children would be, unthankful and unholy. So it goes on in verse number three, without natural affection. You know, loveless and cold, not, not natural affection in regards to homosexuality, but natural affection as far as being loving and compassionate and concerned about one another. Verse four said, people will be lovers of pleasures more than lovers of God. What a materialistic world that we are living in because people are so into asking God for everything they want but how many are asking God, what can they do to please him? 
materialism is just on the rampage. Verse 5 says, having a form of godliness. But Paul says to Timothy, from such turn away. We are definitely living in a time of serious tribulations. We are definitely living in a time where we are being challenged with our faith believers. But God is yet able to strengthen us in the midst of the battles that we are facing and that we're going to have to face. Now, tribulation in, in its entirety will not take place until the church is called up to be with the Lord. But however, the process, the Antichrist system, the governmental system uh, of tribulation is processing itself right now through a lot of the mandates that we see taking place today. Because tribulation means pressure and affliction and distress and, 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 and things that are, are a burden to people. But we don't have to stay locked in that kind of mind. No one that's listening to this lesson has to be trapped in a mindset of being distressed and burdened and troubled when all you have to do is surrender and turn your life over to God. So we understand that the church age today actually can be seen from three uh, perspectives. Yes, the church age today can be seen from three perspectives. The remnant church, which is the portion of believers that are holding on to sound absolute truth. We are not going to compromise. We are not going to bow. We are not going to stop declaring holiness and, and speaking holiness and preaching holiness. And we're not going to stop talking and representing sanctification. And we're not going to stop repenting and expressing the importance of repenting for mankind and for people as a whole to do for our families and our children to know that they need to continuously repent and surrender and allow God to change their life. So we see the apostate church where you can see a falling away. You can see things are changing so fast for so many people in these end times because of compromising, because of being politically correct, because of critical race theory, because of this new woke movement, because of the spiritualism that is taking over the world and taking over the church. The many ways to God seems to cause people to get so confused they don't know how to really serve God but we have to understand that God has a way to be served and that is the way that he has commanded us to do in his holy word now let's look at the words of Jesus Jesus said in Matthew 24 and 24 for false messiahs and false prophets will appear now, there's going to be men that are going to pro pro proclaim that they're the Messiah. And that has happened throughout the years. And there are going to be those that say that the Lord is telling them and the Lord is revealing to them. And they will appear. Now, look, at I put it in highlight like this and in color like this so that you can follow along with me. Because the scripture says that they will perform great signs and wonders. They're going to do miracles. They are going to do things that uh, really looks like it's God, but it's the enemy using them because he wants to deceive you into believing that you can serve him and live how you please to live versus living how God wants you to live and that you are all right and everybody is going to meet the same God no matter how you live. But the scripture lets us know differently that that is not the case. But it also, Jesus also said, if possible, uh, uh, he with signs of wanting to deceive, if possible, even the elect. That means that if it was possible, he would even deceive those that are God's chosen people. But God is here to help us because he wants to reveal this deception in this different world that we are living in. Now let's look at another scripture here in 1 John 4 and 1. It says, Dear friends, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from who? God. Why? Because many false prophets, false teachers have gone out into the world. You have to make sure that what you are being taught the word of God stands behind it. You have to make sure who you're being taught by, that they are operating up under the spirit of truth, through biblical perspective, not through humanism, not through secularism, not through man's wisdom, but through the revealed word of God. 
because this is where we're going to know if they are genuine or if they are not genuine. So false teachers are growing everywhere. So how, so how we, how, how, so in other words, because false teachers are growing everywhere, we now see that things, uh, uh, the things which again are being prophesied, they're being revealed. But again, we have to understand as sanctified servants, as sanctified servants, we must learn how to accept reality. We have to learn how to accept reality. So we see that. We see that the word of God is actually being fulfilled, but people do not want to accept reality. They don't want to accept a, a reality as it, a, 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 as it is. Not as it is. And we can't pretend that what we see is not happening. We can't uh, go into a bubble and say, uh, I don't want to hear anything. I don't want to see anything. I just want to stay in my little protected bubble and pretend that this is all not happening. That actually hurts you worse spiritually. In other words, it, it confuses you. It, 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 it causes you mentally to be disturbed and burdened and to become deceived. So it hurts you uh, more than you think. You have to know what is really uh, reality. We all have to know what reality is so that we can know how to respond correctly and be about our father's business. So lawlessness is now happening. Men are setting up the stage. The enemy is setting up the stage to bring people into a world order that is the opposite of God and to totally oppose God and not even think about serving him according to how he has commanded us to do in his word. It's now happening. Lawlessness, according to prophecy, is gathered go this way it has to go this way so we have to prepare we have to prepare mentally emotionally spiritually and we have to prepare physically now in closing today we just want to look at a quick video and we just want you to just 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 see how this world is just really going from one extreme to the other Let's look at how. Now, that didn't come clearly like I really wanted you to see it, but it's showing us that how the world is changing and how the NFL is changing. Who would have ever thought that the NFL would be saying that, uh, who would, that we can come out and say that we are gay? I want to show you that again because I interrupted it and it didn't come to work. <laughs> clearer that time and I wanted you to see how things have changed and like I said who would have ever thought that the NFL would come out and say hey football is gay I mean look at this video think about what you just saw and you can see that we are definitely living in a whole new world now Roger Goodell who's the, who's the one that's over the NFL he's just following what the globalists want which is for all the major corporations to push this new movement called wokeism. So think about it. It's easy. It, it, just think about it as we celebrate how they celebrated this month, June, the whole month. Gay pride, gay this, gay everything. Every company was and still is promoting the different world end time agenda. 
every major company, Target, Walmart, Pepsi, Cola, you think of all of these companies and they are promoting this different whole new world end time agenda. Now, it, now when they say this Raiders football player called N Nassib, I believe Nassib, or however you pronounce his name, he come out as the first gay NFL football player to admit that he's that way. But we're coming into a world now that's different. We're coming into a world now that it's exactly the way Jesus said it would be. It would come just exactly the way that he said it would be. Because the return of the days of Noah and Lot are now here. Jesus prophesied it. He spoke it very clearly from his own mouth when he began to talk about how it will be in the last days. Now let's look at that scripture. Luke 17, 26 through 30. As it was in the days of Noah, so will it be also in the days of the Son of Man. The Son of Man means Jesus in his humanity uh, as being the Son of Man. He was born 100% man and 100% God in spirit. But it says, it's spoken of and it said just how it would happen. That it would be just like Jesus said it would be. As the Son of Man said it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be now. They ate. They drank, they married wives, they were given in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all. And he said, likewise, as it was also in the days of Lot, they ate, they drank, they brought, they sold, they planted, and they built. But on the day that Lot went out of Sodom, it rained fire and brimstone from heaven. God burned that city to the ground. And it no longer exists. And destroyed them all. Even so will it be in the day when the Son of Man, when Jesus comes back. When the Son of Man is revealed. It's going to come just like he said. And we can see today that it is happening just like God said it would happen. So this is a very serious time that we are living in. And it is so important that we understand the urgency of surrendering our life to God. Now let's look at this man. I'm going to show you a quick video and we're going to close out with some encouraging scriptures and then close out with giving you an understanding that there is hope for you no matter how you live and no matter what you have done, no matter what you are experiencing, there is still hope for you. And we're going to look at this man that had 18 surgeries, not just to change from a man to a woman, which you really can't do, but also he changed his nationality. Let's take a look at this. And, and, and see just what has happened with this person. Hey guys, I just want to take this chance to, um, you know, come out today. Something that's been like on my mind for a long time and I've been very confused about how I identify. I've been very, very confused. And, you know, I've seen a lot of other people online that have come out and been very brave about it and shared their story about how they identify their gender, their pronouns, etc. So. You know, I've taken courage from these incredibly brave um, people and it is Pride Month at the moment. So, you know, I thought this was the best time to do it. Um, you know, and add, add a voice, add strength to the LGBTQ plus I community. Um, so I am going to come out today and say that I've been transitioning. I've been very unhappy with who I am deep down um, for the last eight years. And I've, you know, I've had like 18 plastic surgeries now. And I've just had a facelift, um, a brow lift, a temple lift, an eye surgery, a canthoplasty, um, and my teeth done as well. Um, just these are just part of my transition. Um, and I'm feeling really good. I'm for the first time in my life. I feel beautiful. You know, I'm looking in the mirror and I love the way I look and uh, feel happy. Um, and I hope people can respect my decision. It's a very tough decision to come out this way. Um, but I am coming out as non-binary. Um, I don't feel I identify as male or female. I just feel like I'm just in the middle. Um, and my pronouns are they, them, Korean, Jimin. Because I know a lot of people don't understand me, but I do identify as Korean. And I do look Korean now. I do feel Korean. I don't identify as British. So please don't um, refer to me, any media or anyone online as British. Because I, I identify as Korean. That's just my culture. That's my home country. That's exactly how I look now. 
um, and I also identify as Jimmy and that's my career name but uh, not only that I just I know it's a little bit confusing for some people nobody's ever come out as Jimmy or Korean but um, this is something that you guys know if you follow my journey for the last eight years I've really struggled with identity issues with who I am you know with who I am it's it's a very tough one so I finally now we didn't want to continue it too long but we wanted you to understand just how this world is totally different. Now think about it. In the days of Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities around them, they was not taking hormone pills. They were not doing uh, uh, transgenderism as far as changing from male to female. They wasn't having the surgeries. that we, it, It's worse. And it's not just this particular part of the world being different, but this is just what we're opening up with. There are many things that are different in this world. All sin is displeasing to God. All sin is in need of being cleansed and delivered. All sinners are in need of a Savior, and including those of us that are practicing sanctification, being separated, practicing a holiness lifestyle, we are yet still in need of more deliverance as well. So as we close out, we just want to say to you that there is hope. And that hope is definitely in Jesus. Jesus is the only hope that you can ever have. And he is the only person that you need. It's God and God alone that can help you. All you have to do is surrender to him and believe him for your life to be changed. And he will do just that for you because he loves you enough to help you to change your life for his glory. So the scripture lets us know in 1 Peter 2 and 24, he himself, Jesus, bore our sins in his body on the tree that we might die to sin and live for the righteousness by his wounds you have been healed think about it a woman carries a child in her stomach for nine months because she loves what's inside of her and not only love it she goes through the pain of birthing that child because she loves that child Jesus went through the pain of Calvary because he loves you and he loves me. 1 John 4 and 10 say this is real love. Not that we love God, but that he loved us and sent his son as a sacrifice, a propitiation to take away our sins. He is that blood atonement. He is that blood sacrifice. It does not matter if you have changed your identity. It does not matter if you're confused about who you really are. What matters is God is able to bring you to a new mind and a new life if you just realize that God created you for His purpose. God created you to serve Him just as He created you. So we want to say to you, thank you so much for tuning in to Warriors for Jesus TLE Network Ministry. And we pray that you will stay tuned again for us as we will come back and we will continue to teach you the Word of God. And indeed, I want to say to you that this is a different world, but God wants to save you so that you can survive in this world, live in this world, and help people to be transformed from darkness into this marvelous light, which is in His Son, Jesus. God bless you until next time. In Jesus' name.